professor, thank you very much for your intervention, which we, was uh, a, a huge uh, explanation about the, uh, the importance, uh, also uh, the importance of young people in Africa and their contribution to promote uh, innovative development. Uh, I want to move forward to Mr. Michael Kiza, uh, uh, who serves the program management expert uh, at the East African Center of Excellence uh, for Renewable Energy. Renewable is a very bad word for me. I, it's very, very difficult to pronounce. I'm very sorry for it with all. Uh, renewable Energy and Efficiency. Uh, his current role involves involves designing and implementing programs in, uh, in the areas of uh, policy formulation, capacity building and investment promotions on uh, uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency to contribute the, to universal access of, uh, to sustainable energy. Uh, Mr. Kiza, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Andrea, thank okay. you. Uh, okay. Thank you very uh, much. I, uh, you're more than welcome. I wrote uh, an email that you was uh, saying that is uh, raining in Kenya. Actually, is in Kampala. Is it soft? <laughs> okay, in, yeah. in Uganda. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Um, there is a growing interest in in investment in microgrid uh, in the East African region. Um, what are some of the challenges and uh, what are should be done uh, at regional level to address these challenges? Thank you so much, Andrea. Yes, I wrote to you. My sky is cloudy. It affects my internet connection because I'm I'm using uh, mobile internet, <laughs> so the network gets uh, weaker. So um, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I would like to to introduce IACRI a little bit. The East African Center of Excellence for Renewable Energy and Efficiency is a mouthful. Uh, I don't blame you for struggling to pronounce. It's quite a long name. Uh, is um, a quasi intergovernmental organization of the East African Community Partner States. We have six countries that form the East African Community. Uh, so they conceive the idea of uh, uh, establishing a regional center uh, to promote renewable energy and energy efficiency. So it's a center that is uh, governed by the board of directors, uh, uh, which includes representation of these six countries. So they give the direction we implement a police, uh, policy direction that come in the interest of the East African community to, uh, to increase access to sustainable energy. Um, back to your question, uh, Andrea. Yeah, this is a very important question. Uh, first of all, what are the barriers? The barriers affecting the development of uh, mini grid is uh, not uh, peculiar to the mini grids, but are, mm, are common to the general, uh, the larger picture of uh, the general barriers to undertake renewable energy, and and as well as uh, people who want to do independent power production and supply. So these barriers are really general. Whatever uh, uh, technology we, we are facing, uh, is, uh, these kinds of barriers. This include limited technical and business management skills required to develop and implement sustainable microgrid uh, projects. Uh, lack of clear-cut policies on microgrid-based uh, renewable energy uh, generation, lack of budgetary locations to create enabling environment for mobilizing <coughs> resources and encouraging private sector investment, and absence of least costs and long-term financial models, uh, financial models to uh, provide uh, microgrid-based renewable energy to customers at affordable price while ensuring that the industry remains sustainable. Now, when you zoom in to the challenge of technical capacity, we can identify some clear issues, uh, like uh, the general lack of knowledge about the uh, about uh, the microgrid, lack of specific training programs for the operation and maintenance of uh, microgrids. We didn't have uh, uh, this uh, until uh, we started uh, the microgrid academy, which uh, uh, has been mentioned a lot by. Uh, Gotti, uh, Da Silva, and uh, Olivia, already mentioned. Uh, so, uh, most of the what what has been what uh, what happens mainly we have universities and technical institutions providing general you know training on um, uh, maybe electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, but nothing specific on the microgrid uh, has been uh, done. 
then we have uh, the lack of business management skills. Most, 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 most of these systems fail because you don't have the business uh, management skill. And also, very importantly, is uh, we have a lack of experts that are need, required to design the microgrid systems, the construction supervision. Most of these normally are coming from abroad, are solicited from abroad to do these kinds of things. And of course, a lack of network. Uh, we are happy that uh, we have now associations like African Mini the developer that has come in trying to bring the mini grid developers together. Uh, but this has also been a problem that they, they are not there to share experiences. They didn't have a platform to share experiences. Now, what should be done at regional level to address these challenges? One, of course, we mentioned about the policy. We need the policy harmonization and implementation. Sometimes we have policies in, uh, in paper, but not implemented. But some of them are contradicting. So we need harmonization. We need implementation of these uh, uh, policies. We need to work on sustainable financing models to support the deployment of microbuses. It can be a really challenge. Uh, one key other thing that uh, might affect uh, people in the microgrid is, uh, you know, as we are doing the microgrid, the grid, the main grids are being extended. And what happens when the grid, the main grid arrives in the area of business of a microgrid developer? So these are issues that have been uh, discussed over and over again. But uh, uh, sometimes we don't have proper solutions on how to protect that kind of investment. Now, in terms of capacity, capacity is key because if you have the knowledge, if you have the knowledge, many of these things can be solved. Most of the things started with the knowledge. Everything that we see started with the knowledge and the money came in later. So that is why we have to really strengthen the capacity building. We need to strengthen uh, the training for microgrid managers, managerial level, technical staff, and all the workers in both engineering and business management aspects. And this is what the microgrid academy is trying to do. We started in 2018, uh, we started discussion basically in 2017, but implementation started in 2018, more or less like a pilot process. Uh, we need to scale up this and especially to develop and implement regionally harmonized microgrid training programs. The MGA training program or curriculum that we are implementing provides participants with comprehensive sets of skills necessary to successfully design, develop, manage, and operate decentralized renewable energy systems through interactive training modules by the experts in the renewable energy value chain. And in July this year, I'm happy to, to announce, uh, uh, Dr. Bigotti forgot to mention this, uh, that uh, Race for Africa and IACRI signed a memorandum of understanding uh, focusing on several, several areas of cooperation. But one of the key things there is to strengthen and expand the microgrid academy into an institutionally accredited and recognized regional program. The current, uh, uh, the, the current program we are implementing is not yet accredited uh, uh, as an uh, regional, uh, regionally accepted uh, program. So that is a, the area we want to to go to, to have it accredited and acceptable at regional level. Uh, so that when somebody graduates as a microgrid academy, his certificate can be recognized in all the East African uh, community countries. And this, of course, uh, requires, uh, you know, uh, an implementation of this requires a lot of international support. And uh, whoever is listening to us here, uh, we appeal to you to provide support where uh, where you can to support the scaling up of the microgrid academy and especially achieving the accredit accreditation level. Thank you so much for your attention. And I'd like to thank all the partners that have supported. And thank you so much for bringing us, uh, inviting me to speak at this, uh, this very important uh, uh, platform.